Hi everybody, this is Lisa Larson. Welcome back. And we're doing our fourth in a series on my book, Pause Talking. We thought we were only going to do three and then we realized we hadn't done moving with animals. And we thought that was really important. So the title of today's podcast is Smooth Moves, Tips for a Stress-Free Move for Your Furry Loved Ones. There's a mouthful, <laughs> but it'll look good on the podcast thing. <laughs> um, but we're we're gonna need to we're gonna talk about moving with your animals, and it's really important because it's so stressful for these little guys, and it's key that we as parents uh, help them understand what's going on before they get into the whole thrust of it. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm guessing you have not moved with animals, Pete. Yes, I have. Uh, it was uh, very interesting because we were concerned uh, that, that, you know, would they be comfortable? Uh, there, there's no turning back. You know, are they going to get used to things? And um, we we lost track of our two dogs, and they just took off. Oh no! So so we were really worried about them. Did you find them? No, they came back. Uh, oh, they came back on their own. Yeah. So uh, you know, I have to really rethink uh, the term "my dog is lost" because I'm tempted to just say "my dog left." Okay, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say back. no. That's not the way that we think here. <laughs> It's definitely not the way that we think here. If your dog, if you don't know where your dog is, your dog is lost. Ah, <laughs> so, so. And we're going to, and that's why we're talking about this stuff today. So the fact that we misplace so our the, dog may or may not imply that the dog is actually lost, just walking and coming back in a few minutes. The problem is that there's too many things that can happen to the dog. When we're oh. not taking care of them, there are just too many things that can happen to the dog. You are so lucky that those dogs came back. Um, but what we want to talk about here today is preventing exactly that. Interesting. So, yeah, because that is primarily what will happen if you don't take these steps. And while you were very, very lucky, I will tell you the majority of the people that lose animals when they're going through a move are not that lucky. They lose their animals and they can lose them states away and never see them again and never know how to look for them. Interesting. So it's, it's, a, it's a really, really critical topic in, in knowing how to prepare them and not only how to prepare them, but how, how to do the things that you, we have at our disposal to keep them safe while we are going through this move and while they are going through this move. Okay, so to set up the move, in other words. To set, set it up and, and the move itself. Yes, absolutely. So I guess there are um, concerns and, and obviously, you know, of more of them than I would ever think of. So, you know, as far as the concerns of moving with your animals or moving your animals or setting up the move for your animals. Uh, I guess this is a science. Uh, I mean, it certainly is probably the fair thing to do. Yeah, yeah, there are definite concerns. I mean, and, it, and it's something that I think a lot of people don't think of in advance, just like you've said in the past about the way that you've looked at animals, it's, you know, pet them on the head and you're not thinking about things through their eyes. Yeah. And this is one of those moments where it's very important to think of the, like, number one, the stress that they're going through. You know how one of the things that I always tell people when they're moving with their animals is to make sure that before they leave, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead here, but before they leave the house, let the animal walk around the house and say goodbye. Oh. Because you know how we, when we walk out of a house we're never going to see before, we walk into every room and we, we think about the, our life there and we you think about all the memories. Look. I'm sorry? Yeah. We take one last look. 
We take one last look and we think about all the memories there that are there. Well, animals are like that too. They need to take account what's going on. And if we've prepared them properly, then we can lower that stress level because think about, again, through their eyes, think about what it would be if you were living in a place where you couldn't communicate with anybody, you didn't speak the, the language, you were completely dependent on them. Maybe you have a, a physical disability or, or challenge and you were completely dependent on them. And one day they just came in, put you on a stretcher, put you in a car and drove you off, didn't tell you where you were going and, and you were never going to see that house again and you had no idea. That would be pretty stressful. That would be a shock. That would be a shock. So that's what we want to avoid. And my second point is outside of the stress is what you just brought up, them getting lost because of the stress, because they don't understand what's going on, they can get lost at the house you're moving out of, or they can get lost from the house that they've moved into because it's a new environment for them and they don't know their way around. So you really want to take certain steps to prevent these things. And, and these are just two points that I think are the most concerning is their stress level, helping them understand what's going on, when it's going on, why it's going on, and making sure that you do everything in your power to keep them from getting lost. I did notice one thing that once we had the furniture arranged in the new house where it was gonna go and let the dogs in um, so that we could just take a break, they seemed to really relax because they, they did feel an affinity with their old surroundings. Because they had their old stuff there. Yes. Yeah, well, that's actually one of the tips that I have that, <laughs> that you know, you want to make sure that you you bring stuff of theirs as well, you know. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So that they can recognize that this is their home as well, their beds, their bowls, yeah. their cat trees, their toys. So you want to make sure that they have those things all the way along the path. Then... Then specifically, Lisa, if there are some tips to actually make the pets more comfortable with a move, I have no clue what they might be other than get in the car. Uh, we're leaving. Um, take one <laughs> last look. So uh, this would probably be time if there are tips to find out just what they are. Yeah, yeah, there's, and there's, these are easy things that you can do. So one of them, the, the first one is to prepare them. Now, obviously you can call a communicator like myself to talk them through. And for instance, yesterday I did one, which boy, she really, <laughs> really needed this because she was come, going from uh, Arizona someplace on the west coast to japan with her two dogs wow. and so the the flight was going to be a 12-hour flight they go through quarantine they i mean this is a huge huge deal what we realized when we were doing the session is that sometimes in going through that going through the checklist makes people think about things that they might not think about so in other words, you want to think about what is going to be the animal's experience. So in other words, I, I had to ask her, okay, how long is quarantine going to take? Are they going to take the animals out of their carriers when they're in quarantine? Uh, are they going to take the animals out of their carrier when they go through security? Um, of course, she didn't know any of that, but it's it's kind of nice to think about these things beforehand, start thinking about every single step of the way. And so that you if you know what's going to happen, 
either you can tell them yourself or you can have your communicator tell them. Now, if you're going to tell them yourself, that's fine. Tell them in your own words, however you want to say it. So you can say it to them and they will understand because as I've said before, animals may not understand every word of English or whatever language we speak, um, but we speak words with intent and they understand intent. Oh. So you can tell them, you can prepare them by telling them yourself or you can get a communicator. Now, with when I do it as a communicator, as I say, I take them through every single solitary step and I don't miss a thing. I try not to miss a thing. And it's it's kind of good because then it forces the person I'm reading for to think about those things. One of the things yesterday was if they're on a 12 hour flight, how are they going to pee? How are they going to poop? How are they going to eat? What, you know, what is, what is the plan here? So the idea is to not only prepare them, but prepare yourself and have a real plan for every single step of the way. Wow. Yeah, it's it's very important. And that's for the trip. Now, one of the things while you're going through the move, it's very, very important to isolate the animals so they don't get overwhelmed by the movers. So let's say you've got at eight o'clock, the movers are coming. Feed your animals before the movers come. If they're cats, then you want to 7.30 or right before the movers come. Right when they get there, you want to put them in a bedroom that, that and make sure the movers know to not open that door until they're ready to go in there and you're the one that goes in there and makes sure that the cats are someplace else. Um, the dogs can usually stay in the backyard as long as it's a secure backyard, but you want to make sure you know where the animals are at every point of the move. And you want to make sure that they understand what all of this commotion is like, that they're not getting into any boxes. I heard about one cat who ended up getting into a box. They couldn't find the cat and it spent six weeks in a box. Miraculously, it was still alive after it went through mats and over the sea to huh. Hawaii or someplace like that. So miraculously it was alive, but you wanna make sure that you know where those animals are every moment and go in and check on them during the move because they're gonna be freaked out you know about the hearing things and that's when i talk to them i make sure that they know, understand what all of these noises are you know what all of the commotion is so you want to make sure that you isolate them and so as a as i'm thinking about stepping through you're preparing them beforehand you're you're making sure that they're safe during the move, they should be in a, a carrier or or whatever is safe for them, whether it's a car ride, a ferry ride, a boat ride, a train ride, a, you know, an airplane, whatever it is. Um, but then you also want to introduce the, the animals to the new house. Tell them about the new house. Now, as a communicator, like I say, I will envision the new house. I will give them a, a, a walk around with it and I want to make them excited. But again, you can do this with your own voice. Tell them about the new house. If you get excited about the new house, then they'll get excited about the new house. Tell them all of the wonderful things they're going to have there. If they're cats, they're going to have a, we're going to put you put a, a platform on the on a high ledge for you so you can look out the window, the second story window, and you're going to see the birds and you're going to have such a great view. For dogs, tell them about the dog park that they're going to be going to and and walk around and all of that stuff. And the la and not the last thing, but the one thing that just came to mind is make sure that you talk to a vet beforehand if it's going to be an extraordinarily long trip, like this trip to Japan from the States that person's going to probably get go to the vet and get some sedation for those dogs sure. you know 12 hour 
ride is boy that that's long for a human let alone one of these guys you know yeah. and fortunately that those dogs will be under the seat not in the belly of the plane that's a different story altogether but um so you know i mean those are just a few of the tips those are the easiest things that i can think of offhand in that but you want to think about it in progression you know look at your timeline and what are they going to experience how are you going to prepare it beforehand, during the move, and once you get there? Well, you know, it's 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 common knowledge that that animals read us and they feel us. And you know, I I for one have never thought about it this way. Um, you know, until I started reading your book, I didn't know this ability even existed. And you know, I'm sure that any attempt can be picked up that we do by the animal, at least because it involves intent and we we mean the best for our animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we wanna keep them safe. And part of keeping them safe is keeping them as low stress as possible. Yeah. Keeping them with us where we know where they are, they're not out someplace and running around in an unusual, unknowing place and and you know keeping them as stress free as possible yeah so yeah and hopefully hopefully that that helps some of you guys out there because i know this is a, a big thing that all all animal parents have to deal with most animal parents have to deal with at some point in their life but pete you sent me an article how for Pete's ponderings, I'm going to I'm going to jump in here. You sent me an article that I just absolutely loved yesterday. Well, well, Pete's ponderings. Here we go. I watch Formula One racing. I don't know why I'm not that good of a driver, so I'll never be. But it just uh, interests me. I love the sleekness of the cars. One of my favorite uh, drivers is from Holland, Max Verstappen. And apparently this Max got upset because I guess his cat was behind a door and there's a picture of him on my internet article that I read using a claw hammer and he's got a hole in the middle of the door that he's that he's making to I guess to get his cat out well he it it to me it sounded like the cat had fallen through something gotten behind the behind something and there was a door oh. that was blocking there was something blocking the door so that they couldn't get into wherever wow. the cat was. Okay. Woo uh. Yes. Well, what I loved too yeah. is that he talks about being on the road and he says, sometimes I hate being on the road because I just can't stand being away from my cats. Yeah. And I love that. He's a real cat. He's a real he, cat guy, a cat he's lover. He's a real cat guy. Yes, he is. So and, I, I absolutely and, loved that. Okay, well, I know we're getting past our time here. So I, I appreciate you guys being here. If you want more information about moving with your animals, I've got a whole chapter on it in my book. Um, and it goes into much more detail, has, has some more tips um if you have if you want information uh, about my services you can go to my website which is in the description below also in the description below if you're in the san diego area and you need cat boarding the the associate producer let's say who helps me write <laughs> figure out topics for mm -hmm. the podcast alicia uh uh, Alatriste uh, does cat boarding in her own home. So I'll, I'll link that down there as well. But you can contact me through down there. I would love it if you guys are enjoying these podcasts. I'd love it if you would hit that subscribe and the like button and the bell if you want to be notified of other uh videos that come up and uh please put your comments ask your questions we're 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 very we are a very interactive bunch wouldn't you say so pete i would and you have a lot of information that should be shared
Very good. All right. Well, our, I'll tease our next podcast. Our next podcast is going to be speaking about animals in more humane way, looking at vo the vocabulary that we use when talking about animals, because some animals, some, some vocabulary that we use, some of the words uh, don't really suit what the animals need. So we're going to be looking at that. So I hope you will join us for that. And hopefully we'll, that will be next week if we can get on a schedule here. We're doing pretty well. I think, I think we're getting so. up yeah. every week, every other week. Yeah. So I think we're getting the groove of it. Well, people can certainly it. use what you have to offer. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Podcast Pete. I didn't even introduce you this time. Oh. This is Podcast Pete. I'll always be podcast, podcast Pete to you. Yes, <laughs> you'll be so many things to me, but we won't. We won't, we won't list them all now. <laughs> okay, my loves, take care. We will see you again. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye Lucy.